All right, so knife drills. This is another area that we have to really kind of think about. What are we training the knife drills for? Are we training it for the art aspect, as I like to refer to a lot of stuff, or are we training for street? Um, Kevin was asking me about what disarm would I use in the street? I told him I wouldn't use any disarm because I would create space and run, you know? It doesn't take skill to be dangerous with a knife. So that's one of the things I would, I don't look for a disarm. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna teach someone to say, hey, this is what I want you to do for a disarm in the street. I tell them, look, if you can take off and run, you should probably run. That's the best thing you can do because it doesn't take any genius to cut somebody. So that's reality in street self-defense. Unless you're walking around with a shark suit and uh, stab. <laughs> but so um, that being said, if we look at when, again, just like the stick, the angle one, we're taught, oh, we can meet pendulum parry and pendulum parry. And this is good for beginners in teaching them. But this is not reality. This is teaching uh, attributes. Again, it's all about attributes, about angling left and right. So that is what we want to look at. What do we want to do as far as these attributes and, and make them functional? So when I'm here like this, again, this is functional. This works, right? He's not really trying to hurt me or really cut me, right? So that makes a big difference in itself. Um, and that being said, I understand that if he comes, that's a slashing motion. Let's say he thrusts at me. We're taught, oh, we can still do the pass. Or he thrusts at me, we can go on the outside. Again, how you apply this makes the biggest difference in the world. So if I slash at Kevin, he does a pendulum pass. One, just like that, and two. You see, then I can add the movement. And we all know this kind of motion because it's something that we train. If you train in the Philippine martial arts. If I thrust at him, same thing. He's going to pass it, right? Everything. But it's set up for success, right? I can change this and make it look ugly. It's like Guru Dan says, you can have a guy who's the best fighter and looks amazing when he's moving and everything and you have the worst feeder and he makes that guy look like a beginner. And you can have a beginner and make him look like a professional. So it really depends on your partner when it comes to training. You gotta have a good partner both ways. But then you have to train your partner to be, good, good, be a good partner at times, right? So again, if I'm slashing here, I can say, okay, great. But now my intention is really just to touch the neck. He's gonna, he's gonna parry, right? So, Oh, nice. You see, so I'm using a little bit of strength, not a lot, but I'm really trying to come in. So now, naturally, if I come in, that's where it's going to change it because it's harder to, to deal with that. Because if I'm here like this and I go, oh, and I'm here like that, maybe I felt this push and I start jamming and jamming. So those are the kind of things you have to think about. That's street defense. You got to think about it that way. So I always tell people, if you can always get a weapon of opportunity, get a weapon of opportunity. That being said, what is a weapon of opportunity? It could be a belt that you're wearing that day. It could be anything, it could be your coffee, you may, even though you don't want to get rid of it. You know, um, it could just be anything, your shoe, your book. Those are weapons, your book bag, those are weapons of opportunity, your jacket. Anything that can help you and aid you to defend against this tool, because that's what it is. It's a tool for them to create pain or kill, right? So, um, the chances of someone coming up in the street and going, ah, are not something that I think would be very happy. If that does, I'm like, I don't want to live there. Right? <laughs> so that's one of the key things. So the most likely thing is that they'll thrust in at you. Let's turn this way for the camera purposes. So when they thrust in at you, this is a part. And I, you know, people say, oh, you, you can grab it. People, I've seen people say, oh, you can block it. And those are all great. But remember, he pulls forward and pulls back naturally. See, so you go back. You just pull your hand. And don't let me catch it. Don't even catch it. That's hard to do, okay? Some people say, I can do it. Well, that's great, if you can, awesome. But the majority of people can't do that. So one thing we're gonna look at, I still kinda wanna hollow out my hips, but as it's coming at me, I kinda use this motion, and not to really, uh, I would say, so block, but kinda use it as a, a impeding motion, I guess you could say block. So he's gonna pull back naturally, and I'm gonna follow, just like that. The reason I follow is so make sure it doesn't come in. That's one, one part of it. But this hand is going to be here. Now, I'm not going to be able to catch this here. If I did, I got lucky. All right. So what I want to think about is he comes in, I'm going to follow. Notice I haven't closed my hands, but I follow. Because if he comes back at me, it'll come into my hand. So as he's coming forward, I go one, two. And now my head is down low, and now I've got grip here. Right? And this hand is a reinforcing motion. 
So my hands can translate right into the I twist the knife towards him and I control it. My head is here locking it. One of the reasons, so he can't hit the back of my head. And I can control this close to my body. Not out here, but here. If I hold it here, he moves his arm. I don't have control. If I hold this here, it's harder for him to move. So I use my body weight, the knife to jam it into him or his body in here. Now, this is not my technique, okay? I learned this from Burton Richardson years and years ago. And again, it's something that works very functionally um, with a lot of resistance, okay? So that's one of the key things you wanna think about as you're doing this. So if my curtain's cut, I'm just here, just see, and see, notice he pauses a little bit. That's what I call the Kodak moment, right? Or the Polaroid. So just naturally, just reach out naturally and come back, see? One, see, I'm just tired, I'm now, really touch, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's got a touch, that's another thing. And that's, this hurts, I know yeah. he doesn't want to do this. But when he comes up, and I follow it in. And again, it's kind of like a body check and I'm holding here, you know, in this position. And then again, when you're holding it, you really want to make sure, you can hold the elbow. So I found success this way at times, but if you can put your hands all the way down here and really just sink your body weight on that wrist and pull it, elongate it. And then my other knee is monitoring the inside here, and I just really drop my weight. And you can, Kevin can tell you, this is very heavy. Yes. And so now, instead of using my strength, I use my body to push it in. And the funny thing is, a lot of people say, well, I'll just move my leg. I'll just step in. I'll just step in. So it's, you have two legs. You gotta have one leg in front of you to keep your balance, at least with all the weight and pressure. So that's one of the ones that I find are very functional when someone is trying to thrust at you. Um, in that linear, in that aspect. A linear attack, which is probably one of the most dangerous attacks you can deal with. The other variation, or I wouldn't say variation, another way that someone could attack you is obviously the ice pick grip, where they're coming in like that and everything, which is again, uh, an attack that can be very common. But, you know, people say, I can go here past it. It takes a lot of great skill, right? But I know if I'm here like this, I can meet this position. Will it happen? No. You know, it's hard. Can you get cut? Yes. You know, and all I can say about that is I know for me when I sparred, I go in and done this, and sometimes I don't get this here, sometimes it'll be here. But even if it's here and I'm in this position, I have control, I'll, you know, maybe grab it and lock it. You know, I don't want to bring it, swing it around, turn this way. I don't want to do this, because now he may be able to grab it or not. But if I do this, I want to make sure I have two on one and I control it here, right? So from this angle again, I may go here like this and, then, oh, and control it. This one right here takes a lot of practice, but it does work. It just takes practice. You gotta practice it and practice it until it becomes second nature. Um, and one of those techniques that we've learned over the years, you can do this and pass it. And yeah, you know, the funny thing is that does work. And it, but it's not 100%. And a lot of times it's, it's worked by accident, and people will say, well, you, you did it. But I was like, no, it, it was totally by accident. Um, and you just gotta practice it. And, and I'm not saying you can't get it, you can. Um, this is here, and you really gotta shock the shoulder. I like to do the dive and get into this position, and I hold this, right? And this is something that's happened a couple of times here and there. It's not something that's always been successful. Uh, but again, that's the difference between art and street. You just gotta contest it and, and play with it off that aspect. Uh, another thing that uh, Kevin was talking about was if the person's here like this, which is very common. Um, and, you know, when you're in this position, you want to think about your hands placements. Because you can't always say, well, I'm going to keep my hands down here. I know if someone comes in, I'm like, whoa, wait a second, in this position. And he may have his other hand on my shoulder, my neck, and I'm like, in this position, we'll turn around for the camera. So I may be here like this. So I don't want to grab the wrist or the hand here. What I want to do is break the structure. I wanna, I, I wanna pin this against my chest here. And then as I do this, I wanna break the structure in here like this. And then hug this against my body. Now keep in mind, as soon as I get here, I knee, I knee, I knee. I may headbutt, I may elbow. I don't headbutt on Kevin because of the height difference, right? But I can knee him in the groin, knee him in the groin just to loosen up that hold him and get him away from this idea. And then I can create space and then take off. So again, from this position, if I'm here, I'm like, I don't want any trouble. Boom, break that position and control it. Hold on to that. 
And even when you get here, you could strike. And sometimes you can just grab the elbow, transition, but you've got to get this first, right? And then you can knee them. And you create a, a lot of uh, pain for the partner to weaken up that grip and so on from there. So those are just a couple of things that I like to talk about when it comes to the knife uh, for street self-defense and how to drill it.